Namaskar. What's your name? Francisca. Francisca, yes. Um, I just feel this very strong longing. Um, and this makes me somehow suffer because I want to get somewhere. Yes. Nishmant. And I just don't know how to kind of balance the daily life and the longing and the like need of being free. Basically, when a person is longing for something and longing to be free, it means simply that that connect with the soul has not happened as yet. Because once you're in connection with your... When, once you realize that you have a soul, do you know that you have a soul? Actually, you have a soul, do you know that? Yes. How do you know that? Who told you that? I feel it sometimes. You feel it. You experience it. And how do you feel it? Like, what do you experience? Silence. Emptiness. Exactly that experience of emptiness is not the soul. The soul is not empty, it's an entity, it's a material entity. It's there. It's Atma atom, material entity. It's something that your system has as a guru, as a teacher, as a master, when you were born, it took charge of the system. What if I tell you that and say, no, it's not emptiness, it's fullness. You're not alone, there is a master within that you can relate to. The yearning and the longing is because that experience is not solid, that's all. So you can solidify that experience. Because what are you yearning for? You said freedom. Freedom from what? It's your German speaking. So Freiheit. What is what is the Freiheit you are longing for? Freedom from what? Do you know? From from the ego. And what is the ego? Do you know? Try to, try to imagine what is it that you're trying to be free from. The ego, yes, but what is this ego actually? Is it something connected with you? How did ego happen? With identification, with like believing. Exactly, with believing things, with having ideas, opinions, yearnings, longings, wantings, desires, no? But how did that happen to Francisca when she was a baby? She didn't have all that, right? How did she ha How did this ego build up on her? Somebody did it to her. Society, you know? Das musst du denken, das musst du haben, das musst du tun. So, the, Francisca, what's your mother's name? Claudia. And where are you born? Um, in a little village, Karlstadt. <laughs> Karlstadt. So Franziska, daughter of Claudia from Karlstadt. If you take that as a simple, slim identity, and then you kind of live your life from moment to moment, trying to discern between the voice of the ego and the impulse of the soul, which is not emptiness but fullness within. If you actually feel the soul, you'll feel something very full. The reason you feel emptiness is because the society you grew up in has trained you to aim outward at a God, at Jesus, at these figures, even if you never went to church. And it has genetically imprinted in you that what is within you is emptiness. It is fullness, it's solidity. And you'll find it yourself, you don't have to believe me. 
just try to tune and do that exercise after the satsang. Sit outside for a moment and say, okay, I had a plan to go and have lunch at this place, that place. Is it the right thing for me to do? And you'll get an impulse, a very quiet, soft, imperceptible impulse, yes or no. It's a binary impulse emerging from the material presence of the soul within you. And you know what happens then? If you actually practice this, Suddenly, there is nothing to be free from because you'll experience freedom like that. It makes sense, no, a little bit? This… it's beautiful, no, to try it out. I mean, you have a German brain, most of you are clever thinkers. So you can rationalize yourself into what I'm saying and see that it's… Like, why would it not be like that? Why would there be emptiness within? Only because you've been told that. So if I tell you the opposite and you try the opposite and it results in an experience of freedom, then what after that? Then the freedom grows. Because all those ideas are just the ego, it's actually you're just a Francisca, daughter of… of uh, yeah. Claudia from Karlstadt. That's what you are, nothing much more than that, finally. You know what I'm trying to say, that all those ideas you have of freedom and I yearn for this and I long for that and it's because you're not in this moment connected with your soul. Once you do that, then it's after that, it's just life, living from moment to moment. You're like a little bit… a smile on your face and that's all. Life is not much more than that, Francisca, it is not. Life is about just this moment and just a smile on your face. You know what I'm saying, do you, do you feel it? You can be honest and tell me, you can… you don't have to be nice to me. I'm asking you, do you feel that this moment is where it's all about? Yes, but I feel more it's like con conceptual. It's like, yeah, that's something I know, and, but it's not something I really feel in my heart. Yes, because till now you thought it's emptiness, no? Did you, did you actually know that you have a material soul? Your mind cannot accept that, no? That it's material. Can you accept it? Difficult, no? You know why it's difficult for you to accept that the antar atman or the soul is a material presence? Because your genetic imprint and your cultural information is that it is energetics and there is the divine somewhere and yes, it's all energy and it's the universe. But there is no inherited information that there is a material presence within because culturally you have been imprinted and impacted by religion which has removed the divine from the individual and placed, firstly made him into a man and then placed him somewhere with a beard. Your ancestors thought that way. So that inheritance has to be transformed. where you take all the universal energies and, and put them within as your individualized master. And you start with the conceptual, because as a human being, the conceptual is what you're familiar with. You start with the conceptual and take up a practice, a sadhana of daily tuning in. We'll do the golden kriya afterwards, the meditation, and you can practice this. And slowly, what is a conceptual exercise will become real for you. And a day will come if you practice it, a day will come and you can actually feel that impulse of the soul as a material impulse, not as an idea or just energy or the universe or the cosmic. It's a material presence within. But the 
conceptual cannot grasp it because it's like, okay, it's an idea, yeah, great. But gradually if you practice it, it's not an idea anymore, it becomes a real experience. But I also feel this disconnection from my heart somehow. Like Disconnection? Yeah. It's not that you are disconnected from your heart, it's the ego is coming in between. You know? Because the conceptual is that extreme. The society you grow up in trains the conceptual. It makes you conceptual monsters actually in a way. The Germans, the Swiss, you know, the, the thinkers of Western Europe, the extremists actually. So the focus is so much on the rational and the conceptual that that's why that experience of the, the expansion of your consciousness can only happen into a supra-rational state, into a transformative state, if the surrender is there to the soul. And you start to practice, you practice, you practice. Because you can go to an Advaita master and they'll tell you all these things are the, the ego, just retract into being the observer and become one with the Supreme Soul and the pain will disappear. Yes, it will, but it'll come back at one point, because there's no surrender. There's just no experience of surrender and without surrender, the truth cannot be known. So the surrender is to what? Hin gabe, in yedem moment, hin gabe, hin gabe, hin gabe, hin gabe, the seele, the seele, the seele, hin gabe, hin gabe. Always in that hin gabe. Because when you surrender, then you're picking up those weapons against the ego. You will feel a sense of wholeness and solidity if you take this practice. But that's something I thought I did. <laughs> mm. What practice did you do? Um, Vipassana, I've been with Muji for four years. With who? With Muji. Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, so what you did in those practices is to distance yourself from the experiences, right? Yeah. And what I'm telling you is the diametrical opposite. It is not to merge with Supreme Soul, you are not the soul, you are not the soul, you are a body and an identity and you are in surrender to the soul because exactly those practices and I'm not surprised that you mentioned these practices, exactly these Neo-Advaitin practices of actually identifying with soul and watching all actions of the body as illusions, in a sense, is what takes away the responsibility for the actions and results in an experience of emptiness. It's not at all surprising that this is what your practices are, because this is exactly where it leads. This continuous yearning, this feeling of not having reached it, this feeling of not feeling the heart and this experience of emptiness. But it's not like this. It's the... What I'm telling you to do is the opposite. I'm saying it's a material presence and you are not to identify with the soul because this is a body, it's not a soul, it's a body. And when you start to surrender to your master, the soul, you bend, you bend, you bend, you feel the impulse, you start to discern, hey, hey, hey Francisca, is this action coming from the ego or is this action coming from the truth? It's a sadhana of every moment being vigilant. It's not a sadhana of stepping back and saying, 
this is all illusion. It is not illusion, what your body does is very real. It is illusory in a philosophical sense, in a conceptual sense. The pain and the suffering is caused by this body doing what it does. So we train the body and the identity to do things that are emerging from the truth and not from the ego. It's action, action, action. Which action of yours is coming from the truth and which is coming from the ego, that is the practice to find that out here. And that is not the practice of the Neo-Advaitin tradition or tradition, the Neo-Advaitin way. So are you ready to, to actually shift the compass and change the, the way you are approaching this whole thing? I say true freedom lies in the surrender to the soul, which is not you. It's, you're just you, Francisca, just there. That's me, I'm Francisca, daughter of Claudia from, Kal from Kalshta. I'm not much more than that and now I have to surrender to this soul because it's, it's my master and it's sending an impulse in every moment. My actions are coming from this body decided by Francisca. And now Francisca is going to take things in hand and going to listen and surrender to the soul, not push through an egoistic act. Even even observing one's actions and detaching from them is an egoistic act, finally. So instead of doing all of that, I just simply, just simplify it down. So when I, when I decide where I'm going to have lunch, I sit quietly, I say, Francisca, now you're deciding where you're going to have lunch, okay? Now I'm going to, I, Francisca, I'm going to ask my soul, uh, should I go to... Raman Ashram for lunch or should I go to Sheshadri Ashram for lunch? So I say, do, should I go to Raman Ashram? I get a yes or a no. And even if I make a mistake and the answer is from the ego, after ten times of asking the eleventh time, it won't be a mistake anymore. I feel it's very difficult to make this like... to feel what's really coming from... Yes. from myself and not from my mind. So, it's not from yourself, it's actually from the soul, which is the self, and it is difficult to distinguish. You're right, you're absolutely right. But that is the adhyatmic practice, the adhyatmic sadhana. The spiritual practice is not to observe anything, it is to discern. And it will be difficult, but it will be possible because others have done it. It is not easy because sometimes it's like, you know, your own, the ego's desires are so overwhelming that one can't hear that. But one persists and one persists and one persists. You make five mistakes, the sixth time you'll know. It's worth trying it out, no? Because what you have done till now has brought you to a state where you're yearning, you feel an emptiness and basically it's all a nebulous thing going on. You bring solidity into your contour, you stand here in this moment and you bend down to this moment and to your master. It's a little bit of a shake-up, this practice. It's shaking up a lot of Neo-Advaitins in the world. When I say what I'm saying, they're like... What, till now we were trying to, you know, detach from identity, what are you telling us to do? Those who have done that are saying the same thing that you are saying. Hundreds of them, thousands of them. At one point there's just nothing, but it's not even something. I would not suggest you to take this path of observing and... And then what happens is the observer starts to observe and then suddenly there's an observer observing the observer that is observing. And then a few weeks later there is an observer observing the observer, that is observing the observer, that is observing the observed. And this is actually what happens to people who are following Neo-Advaitin teachings which do not speak of surrender to the soul. Surrender, okay, surrender, but surrender to what? To the Guru? That's not what it's about. 
The guru is only a, a, a step in the process to surrender to the self. But in many neo advaitin traditions, the guru becomes the one to surrender to, which is not how it is. The guru has to show you yourself, you have to feel it. If you don't feel it, that means the guru has failed. Or the seeker is really not listening, but most of the time one starts to feel it. It's not emptiness there, it's fullness. At least practice it, see what comes up. You'll feel more solid also, you know. At least the yearning is for this and not for that. What I've observed, and I can tell you this by way of caution, that most neo advaitin seekers just refuse to give up that practice because it is a practice of ego. The ego is very happy to observe everything and not take responsibility and do whatever happens and then observe the results and detach from the pain. If you detach from the pain, how do you transform them? And you keep creating painful situations which you detach from. That is not Advaita Vedanta anyways. The fundament of Advaita is surrender. And there'll be different paths and different teachers. It's about surrender to the soul and its mastery, becoming a servant of the soul. And the practice is difficult, as you said, yes, I agree. But at least you make certain steps which are solid. You know? It will be all right, you'll feel the... F you'll feel the fullness, you know? It reminds me of a very beautiful Upanishadic uh, uh, shloka which says, Purnam adaha purnam idam. It means fullness is that, fullness is this. And purnat purnam udachyate, meaning fullness emerges out of fullness. So, emptiness is just the imprint of a religious inheritance which can be transformed at a decision now. I have a soul, it's full, it's present, it's material, I am its servant. I yearn for nothing other than the soul. I am in surrender to the soul, to the master of my being. <laughs>